Hi, everyone. So today I have with me problem 3.65 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. So I think that this and one more question are going to be the last for chapter three. And then I guess we can start on chapter four. Um, so this problem, I didn't really get a complete chance to go over every, um, like the entire solution on my own. So just bear with me this, um, I'm going to be working it out as we go. So this might be a little bit um, slower than usual, but um, as usual, you can watch on double speed or whatever speed you like to watch it at. You can fast forward, um, whatever works for you. Okay, so uh, a 76.0 kilogram rock is rolling horizontally at the top of a vertical cliff that is 20 meters above the surface of a lake. The top of the vertical face of a dam is located 100 meters from the foot of the cliff with the top of the dam level with the surface of the water in the lake. A level plane is 25 meters below the top of the dam. A, what must be the minimum speed of the rock just as it leaves the cliff so that it will reach the plane without striking the dam? B, how far from the foot of the dam does the rock hit the plane? Okay, so one thing, even though we have a diagram right here, one thing that kind of annoys me about this problem is just the way the diagram is drawn. So what, I'm just going to clarify something right here. And that is, even though this 100, it seems to only extend until this point, it's actually, it's actually like all the way till the end. So like, all the way there, if that is the edge, if that's kind of like the um, the cliff, right? But if the cliff is right here, then that's 100 meters. But the point is that this diagram's a little bit strange. We're going to go ahead and assume that 100 meters covers, yeah, it's from the foot of the cliff. And it just doesn't really seem that way in this picture. So just going to clarify that it seems like it ends right over here, but that's not the case. Okay. Or sorry, no, no, it's the foot of the cliff all the way to the very end. Oh yeah, like the face of the dam. So if this is the dam, then that's going to be right here. Okay. It's all the way basically that that's the whole point of this, that the 100 meters covers everything. We don't have to add or subtract or do any sort of analysis. This diagram is probably not even to scale. So that's what we have to assume. Okay. So let's get started on the part A. So what must be the minimum speed of the rock just as it leaves the cliff so that it will reach the plane without striking the dam. So what we're trying to do is make some sort of like motion like this, right? So as you can see, my corner doesn't even actually hit, sorry, my projectile motion drawing, it doesn't even hit the corner. It goes like just above it, right? So that's sort of the projectile that it's going to be following. So what's the minimum speed of the rock just as it hits the plane? Oh, no, sorry, that's part B. So it must be the minimum speed of the rock just as it leaves the cliff so that it will reach the plane without striking the dam. So let's go ahead and recognize that this projectile is, of course, X and Y, both its two-dimensional motion. So we can go ahead and write down our um, X knowns and our Y knowns, right? And remember, as usual, we like to set up a grid, uh, like a Cartesian coordinate system. And we're going to say that this is plus X and this is plus Y. And for y, because we are moving down, um, we are going to be, okay, so because we want to hit exactly right over here, we're going to see that that's minus 20. And the reason we say that is because that's kind of just like, that's the end point reference that we have, right? So we know that if we measure if we measure the projectile at this point, then we know um, if we measure the um, the parameters for the projectile, or sorry, like the um, the speed of the speed, um, the distance, the acceleration, the time of the projectile for this point, it will just miss the dam. So that's the perfect situation that we're looking for. Okay. So the y is going to be the distance is going to be minus 20, right? Because if we if we want to hit this point, that's only minus 20 meters. So then we want the vi, 
which is VIY, and that's going to be zero meters per second because this rock is only rolling horizontally, right? There's no vertical component to it. Then there is acceleration, which because we're on planet Earth, that's minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the time, so the time it takes, we don't know. And we also don't know what VF is. So those are just the facts for the Y direction or Y component. For the X component, so we know that the X only has three variables. It's going to be D, V, and T, right? Because it's constant. There is no acceleration, so we don't have VI and VF. We just have V, T, and D. And we don't have an acceleration either because there is no acceleration in the X direction. So the speed, this is actually what we're trying to figure out, right? So what must be the minimum speed and it's rolling horizontally. So we're trying to find horizontal speed. We don't know what time is, but we know that these both both these times are equal. Um, you can see some of my previous videos of why I explained this in more in detail, but of course, if something's in the air for one second, then it's only traveling horizontally for one second, it's only traveling vertically for one second. If they're both one projectile, then it's impossible that one thing in one direction is moving longer than the other direction, right? No, it's one, it's one motion. So then the distance we know is a hundred meters, right? And we made that clear at the beginning where it's not um, in the diagram. It looks like there's extra few meters. No, the whole distance is 100 meters, according to the question. And the time we don't know, right? But recognize that if we want to find V, we need to find, we need to have a T, right? And to find T, we can use, we can use T in, we can find T, to find T in X, we can get T from Y. And to get T from Y, we have our three knowns and one unknown. So we can just solve for that. So we can have D is equal to VIT plus half of AT squared. And when I plug in all my values, before I plug in my values, actually just note that VI is zero. So we can just cancel this out. So we get D is equal to half of AT squared and D is minus 20 is equal to half of minus 9.8 times T squared. And when we solve for T, I am getting I'm getting 2.0203 seconds. So that's time, right? So if that's time here, that means that's time here. And then what's the speed? Well, of course we can just do speed is equal to distance over time. So that's going to be 100 meters over 2.0203 seconds. And I always like to have some extra decimal places because it just eliminates error or it minimizes error. I shouldn't say eliminates it, it minimizes it. Um, okay, so I'm getting 49.4975. Meters per second, so that's going to be like um, approximately, you know, fifty meters per second, All right? According to our significant digits, because one hundred, we only have one significant digit here and here. Okay, so that is fifty meters per second. That is our answer to part A. So the minimum speed of the rock just as it leaves the cliff should be 50 meters per second in the X direction. And because there's no Y component, it's just 50 meters per second um, in the horizontal, in the direction of rolling horizontally in the first place. Okay. But it's only asking for speed, so we don't need to specify direction. Okay, so part B. How far from the foot of the dam does the rock hit the plane? Okay, so now, now we're actually looking for this point, right? So if that's where it lands, how far is this? What is this distance? That's what we're trying to figure out. So now we do have to like realize that we're traveling this extra 25 meters per second in the Y direction. And we said that before we already made it clear that 
we already made it clear before and also applies to this part of the question that it's it's not going to hit the dam it's just going to skim by it like just the, the the smallest distance it can um it can be from the face of the dam without actually touching it or being slowed or it's not going to be an obstacle basically so now we have to do our y and x again right so we have our y component and our x component so this time we have minus 45 right so we have to travel 20 plus 25 in the downwards direction the vi is equal to zero meters per second and the time the time we don't know but another thing is we are looking for uh, we yeah, we are looking for distance, right? So we don't know what distance it is. The initial speed, I guess, in X, we have, it's going to be like 50, but 49.4975 meters per second. And then our time, which we don't know, right? So if we want to figure out what this distance is, we have to get time, which we can get from y right so we can use the fact that we have three knowns one unknown use our equation and figure it out so we have we can do d is equal to the same equation as before v naught plus half of a t squared i love this i love 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 when v i is zero because then you can just cancel this out right so then you have d is equal to a half of minus 9.8 times t squared And when we do that, oh, we have minus 45. I should write that down. Minus 45 right over here. So we get 3.0300. For six seconds. Okay, so that is the time it takes to go to go all the way down forty minus forty five meters, and then we said that because we don't want this to be an obstruction, um, we want it to just pass swiftly, um, as close as possible to the face of the dam we have to have the minimum speed of 49.4975 meters per second. So we can use that to find D, right? So we can use that to see how far it went because now we have our V and we have our T. So if we multiply that together, it's D is equal to V times T, which is, one hundred and fifty meters, right? And then, we it travel we traveled or we said that this rock is going to travel for a total distance of 150 meters you know horizontally from this point or from this like from the edge of the cliff but what about this 100 right so we're only looking for how far from the foot of the dam this is the foot of the dam right so we should subtract this 100 from 150 yeah subtract 100 from 150 I always get confused, subtract which from which. Um, that's so funny because I'm in graduate school doing like literally studying physics and small stuff like that still confuses me. Um, but yeah, I guess that'll never get old. But okay, so it's 150 minus 100 and then we're left with 50. So that means 50 meters from the foot is where the rock hits the plane, okay? So that is the solution to our problem. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email or leave um, your questions in the comments. Um, as usual, if this was helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe because um, it really helps me figure out what you guys like. Um, I can see the stats. So if you wanna see more content like this in the future, um, yeah, please don't forget to like and subscribe and um, check out some of my other some of my other videos um thank you so much for watching and see you next time